This is CryptoTube, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going through how to set up and manage your cryptocurrency wallet. And this will be done in eight simple, easy to follow steps. Now a cryptocurrency wallet is a piece of software that allows you to view your public and private keys. You can then interact with the blockchain, send and receive crypto, as well as view your balance. So the first step is to actually locate the wallet of choice, be it Bitcoin, be it in this example, Feedcoin. You want to either download directly from the GitHub account as so, or through their official website. You would need to know what operating system you're running. Are you on Mac, Windows, or Linux? And then we'll see bottom left-hand corner of my screen as I hover over these HTTPS forward slash github.com. So this is coming straight through the official GitHub channel. Step two is to then download this. So for me, I'm on Windows and I will click the Windows icon to download. We will have a slight variance right now. If I just pull up my file folder, once you click Windows, you will get a message pop up that says, what do you want to do with the feed Windows wallet? You want to click open. At that point, we should be on a similar footing like this. And this second line down, you want to double click and extract those files. It will then give you an option to browse and, and securely save them in the file of your choice. I would put them into downloads and that's where I keep mine. And once you have done this then, your Feedcoin logo will actually turn orange like mine. I will then copy the shortcut and paste it to my desktop. At that point, we are here. So now for step three is to actually open the wallet. So launch it by double clicking and it will eventually load up like this without any balance, of course. And once you launch, it will take a while to synchronize. This is because it has to download the whole blockchain, all the data that's occurred previously as it stores a copy of this. So depending on the age and size of the blockchain, this could take from a few hours up to a few days, even a week or so if you are downloading the Bitcoin wallet. Once you're fully synchronized, we are good to go and start with our security checks. Do not do anything until this has fully synchronized with the network. Now, step four is to actually back up your wallet. So to actually do a backup, we need to understand why in the first place. So if your PC becomes corrupted, you could lose this file. And that means losing your funds as there's no way to get those back. So by keeping a wallet backup offline, so for example, I always keep mine on a USB stick. It means if this PC does get corrupted, I have my backup and I can restart that wallet and access those funds again. So click file and then back up the wallet. So this will then load for you. And you want to locate somewhere that you're going to find it easy to find. So I'll go to downloads. And at this point, rename it. So I'm going to name it feed-wallet and save it in there. And then you get a little pop-up notification letting you know that it has been saved. So we'll just go and get that back. So feedwallet.dat. You want to then take a copy and what I've done is actually created a folder on my desktop called wallet backup and I want to paste it into there for safekeeping and this is where I would keep all of my crypto wallets and then periodically update them and then resave them on a USB stick keep it offline that's just the most secure method that we can choose so that was step four, and that is actually backing up your wallet. So step five is to encrypt a wallet. Now encryption means 
if for some reason someone's able to access your wallet, maybe remotely, or maybe they physically break into your house, they can only use and transact the coins if they know your passphrase. So this is the importance of setting up encryption. I've already encrypted this one, but go to settings and click on encrypt wallet. I'll, I'll just change the passphrase really quickly. So you will see these top two lines. So it'll be passphrase and then repeat your passphrase. So I'm going to create a, a new one. Click OK. Passphrase was successfully changed. For you, it'll just say passphrase was successfully set. And then you click OK. So now you've got your account password pr protected. And when you want to unlock your wallet, come down here. You'll see it's currently locked. To unlock re-enter your passphrase and now your wallet is unlocked and usable by you so at this point we've now downloaded and secured our wallets as best we can so next up is the functionality of these wallets and we're going to start with actually receiving some crypto so we're currently on the dashboard receive is down here if you click on that Use this form to request payments. All fields are optional. Now this is our receiving address. Begins with FN, ends in G2. You could also click on receiving addresses and it will give you a few. The top one being the one that's already pre-populated in here, FN, G2. But there's a few options here because it says, these are your feed addresses for receiving payments. It is recommended to use a new receiving address for each transaction. And this is going to give you a little bit more anonymity on the blockchain. So what we would do is take our address, I would just double click it here, control and C, and then you've copied it. So if someone said, okay, I'm happy to send you some crypto, some feed coins, this is the address that we need to send them and they can then give us some funds. Next up, we are going to show you how to actually send some funds. Now I do have funds in my account. Now, if I want to pay it to that address, I would be paying myself. So FNG2 account, label, so I could just label this me and the amount, maybe I'll send 10 FYD across. You can then decide to send this quicker and increase the transaction fee if you wish. I'm actually gonna send myself those 10 coins and it says 10 coins are gonna be sent with a transaction fee of 0 0.00002260 FYD, which is tenths and tenths of pennies. It's absolutely nothing. So I'll just click yes and make that transaction. Bottom right hand corner, transaction sent. And then that's how I've sent some crypto. So I'll obviously I've sent that to myself in this example. However, if you want to send to your friend or to an exchange, you just need to find the receiving address of that person of the exchange and then send in the same format that I've just done then. And then finally, we are checking the transaction. So this will take a little while to actually update. Unconfirmed payment to yourself it takes a little while for these transactions to confirm. Now, the ones with the ticks are the confirmed transactions. 163 confirmations thus far for that transaction and this one immature 99 confirmations will be after available after 101 confirmations now the confirmations are the number of other computers that have verified your transaction and how many blocks have passed so we're going to actually go and check a verified transaction out right now so <clears throat> this was a stake reward that i received Double click it and down here we have transaction ID. So it's this huge number down here, control and C. And then what we're gonna do is go onto the FYD block explorer. If you type in any cryptocurrency that you've got, so if it's Bitcoin, so Bitcoin Explorer, you'll get a list of explorers that you can go and check out the blockchain of. And now we have our transaction ID, we can copy it in there. So that'll paste in 
and then we can search for that specific transaction. And it will locate that exact block. So once this loads up, we will see our transaction of 40 coins staked. And that was my address down there. So this is one particular block in time. So within this block, I received 40 FYD, which was a staking reward. There was 140 coins going to this address, which was actually a masternode reward. And 20 coins went to the feed treasury. Depending on what blockchain you're looking at, there may be different block rewards for different things. For proof of stake coins, you will see maybe proof of st uh, stake rewards, masternode rewards, and then you may get some activity on the network as well. So that is pretty much how you can use your wallet successfully. Um, we went through how to download it from a trusted source, how to actually save your shortcut on your desktop, how to then launch it, back up and encrypt your wallet, receive some crypto, send some crypto, and then just check out a transaction on the blockchain. So this was a basic introduction to crypto wallets. If you liked the video today, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see any more tutorials such as this or anything else you can think of, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to provide a video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.